Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing another game schooling video. I promised this video for several months, so I'm excited to actually be getting it done. So we're gonna be talking about US geography games today, and I'm really excited to share some of the ones we use with you. So if you are new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to give you different curriculum ideas, organizational ideas, and ways to invite Christ into your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button. And let's talk about these games. So just as a reminder, I have two other game schooling videos. I have one on math and I have one on language arts. And so I'll make sure those are linked down below if you wanna check those ones out. And today we're gonna to be talking about US geography games. If you have any world geography games that you love that are you know, for ages like 10 and under, even just like within the three to five age range, please let me know down in the description box, not in the description box, that's for me. Put it down in the comments and let me know what kind of games that you like because I don't have any world geography games, but I'd love to do some with my kids, especially right now because we are studying world geography. So if you have suggestions and ones that work for you for younger kids, please put those down in the comments and I would, I would love to hear your suggestions. But I think that's all. So anything that I say here, I'll link it down below in my blog post so you can check it out. If I don't find one exactly the same, I'll try to link something similar. So I think that's it. Let's do this. Okay, so the first game I wanted to mention is Ticket to Ride. And this is the first journey one. We also have the older version, the adult version, that always just sounds weird <laughs> anyways. And so we don't, we haven't played that one with our kids yet. My oldest probably could play it. I'm not sure about the other ones, but this one's actually very, like very simplified. So this is the first journey. I don't know if it has the age range. It says six plus down here. And then on the back, you can kind of see just a little bit of the map. So the original one is a lot more complicated. It requires a lot more trains. This one is very, very simplified. And usually the game goes pretty darn quick. But I really like this game because it at least gives kids an overview of what the United States looks like. Gets them a little bit familiar with major towns or cities across the country and different things like that. It helps them with strategy. They get a route and they have to figure out the best way to go or if somebody has already taken the way they were gonna go, they have to rearrange their ideas. So it kind of helps with that more complex thinking. And I will say this says six plus, my five, he's six now. But when he was five and a half, I think is about when we got this game, he did start playing it at that age. And it took a little bit for him to kind of get onto the game. We played, I helped him or my husband would help him for a while. But after he figured it out, he just, he is really good at it and he loves to play it. I'm the winner! And so I really, really enjoy this game. And I just think it gives kids just a very, very good overview of the United States helps them understand it a little bit better. I also let my four, she's almost four year old play with me and she helps me put the trains, like I'll just tell her how many and it helps her with her colors because the trains are, you know, different colors. So the trains themselves are different colors and then the routes are a variety of colors. And so when I collect all the cards, then she can put them where they're supposed to go. And so that helps her a little bit as well and she becomes familiar with the game. So it can be adapted to even younger kids if you're helping them out a little bit to figure out the routes. And then again, kids just have to figure out what's gonna work best. They have to collect the colors in their hands and they just really enjoy it. My, my seven-year-old sometimes gets mad because she thinks she doesn't win very often. <laughs> so occasionally that happens and she doesn't like it as much as some of the other kids because she thinks that about most games, but she does win the games. She just, you know, kids kind of, we all do that, right? We just like blow things up on our head <laughs> bigger than it is. If we lose one time, then we've lost all of the games and we can never win. But anyways, I digress and go on a tangent. This is a really fun game. I think this is kind of our like number one favorite US geography game to play is Ticket to Ride. Okay, the next game I wanted to mention is the Scrambled States of America game. It's just a cute little guy. We have just recently started playing this more. This one is for eight plus and I feel like that's more accurate. It is slightly harder to play with younger kids, which a lot of my kids fall under this age range just because there's a fair amount of reading involved. And so what we have done is turned it more into a, just a learning game instead of like a competitive thing <laughs> with my kids. And so my oldest still can read all the things, but my younger ones can't. So let me kind of explain what I mean. 
So all the kids are gonna get a little map of the United States they can look at, you know, they're different colors and it just shows you where the oceans are and things like that because that's important to aspects of the game. And then there's these blue cards, which are all the state cards. So they have the state's name on it and they have the capital and they have the nickname and then the color of the state. Obviously that's not its real color, but in the game, that's the color we had to tell our kids like the states aren't really these colors, okay? So you have those game, those deck of cards, and then you have a red deck of cards that gives you different things you're gonna look for. So this says one, two, three, four. State has four or more syllables. So they, this is where like the reading comes in. They have to be able to read the state name and then clap it out. And so what I did with my kids this last week is I went through when they first got all their cards, their state cards are all laid out. I read them to them and just to kind of help them figure out what states they even had in the first place. And then they'll, they switch cards fairly frequently. And so I would read them again. I tried to help them keep track. You know, my oldest can figure it all out by himself, but the younger ones I helped keep track. And then it also helps with direction. So this says is east of Missouri. So that's when this little map will come in handy because they can, you can show them where Missouri is and then talk about directions. It has a compass right here as well but then you can have them find something that's east and they're gonna look through their cards and figure it out. And so with some of my younger kids, it's just been a little bit easier if I'm sitting right there and kind of talking them through it and helping them. And it's supposed to be this sort of fast moving game, but it's harder to do when your kids aren't very good readers yet. So my oldest can make it very fast, which is frustrating sometimes. But if you wanted to play with just, with just a younger group of kids, you could do that but you'd have to be working with them and interacting and helping them to learn names. I feel like it's a really good reading opportunity. It's great to teach syllables and colors to young kids because there's some in here that asks for the state colors. All these different things are really great, but if you are gonna play with younger kids, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be a little patient with it and you gotta help them out a lot because it's not, it's not gonna be easy. But I really think it's a great game. I have really enjoyed it. I feel like eventually my kids are gonna know all this information really, really well as they continue to play this game and they're gonna, they're gonna know more about the United States than I do. Okay, so the next game I wanted to mention is Sequence States and Capitals. <laughs> In my other two videos, I have Sequence games as well. There are so many sequence games and they're really great. I have enjoyed all of them. Some of them are slightly harder than others. Some of them take a little bit longer than others. This one is fairly quick and it's fairly easy also for young kids to play. There's a math sequence game that isn't very easy for young, young kids to play, but even my four-year-old played this today. She's not the best at it. You know, she doesn't understand the strategy behind it of trying to get this one's five in a row. They're all a little bit different. So read the instructions. And so she doesn't quite understand that part, but she could do it by herself because all that you do, the board looks like this, you know, you can kind of see, obviously it's bigger. It doesn't have this outline of the United States on it, but I wanted to show you this visual because this is what the cards are gonna look like. So this one has the capital on it. So this is Denver and shows where it is. And then it has the color. So then on the actual board, they can go look, find the same color. As you can see right here, I don't know if that's gonna focus for you, but there's Colorado. And so then they know that that's a match. So it's a little bit easier for a variety of age groups to play, especially younger kids, because all they have to do is just recognize the shape and the color. So again, it's a little bit of pattern recognition for younger kids. But then as my kids were playing it, they were actually just playing it this morning so I could get some footage for you guys. Then I was telling them as they put them down, I would say, oh, Denver, Colorado, because they aren't big readers yet. I was just trying to help them recognize this is the capital, that's the state, and having them hear it out loud so they know how to say it and then start to recognize, oh, this capital goes with this state. And there's two of each one on the board, which is kind of consistent with all the sequence games. They usually have two of each, whatever type of game you're playing. And then they get five in a row, I believe, and my daughter won and she was very, very excited about it because you know this is the seven-year-old that never, never wins anything. <laughs> but she did win today. <laughs> and I think she won another game yesterday. I think they were playing Uno and she won, so 
I don't know what she's talking about when she says she never wins anything. Anyways, and so I really like how this is laid out. It does make it very easy for, for young kids and for older kids to play the game. It's a fairly quick sequence game and it helps with strategy, obviously, because as they get older, they can pay more attention to where they're putting their pieces that they need to get five in a row. When they're super young, it's kind of just whatever card they have, they're just putting it all over the board. And this one is easier for my kids to use strategy in. The math one, they're so focused on trying to solve the problems that it's really hard for them to focus where to put them to win on the board, if that makes sense. Whereas this one, it's like, oh, they can easily look and know that they have another state or a capital that's right next to where they already have a piece. The math game just uh, has a little more, another step of being complicated that makes it a little bit harder for them to focus on strategy because they're focusing on so many other things. But we have really enjoyed using sequence states and capitals. Okay, so the next game I wanted to mention is USA Geo Bingo. I guess that's how you'd say it. So this is just a fun bingo game. I know kids just enjoy playing bingo. And it actually says for four plus, but I feel like this game, the sequence game is a lot easier for like my four year old to play than this game is. This game's hard even for some of my older kids just trying to recognize the pattern. So they don't have any different colors. They're all the same color. Whereas the sequence game, they're different colors, which helps them pick them out faster. This one's a little bit harder. So let me show you a game board. So they have a variety of game boards in there and that's what they look like. See, so they're all yellow and it's just a little bit harder when you don't have a color to pick out for my kids to find the states on here. It does say their names. So if they know the name, and then it comes with these counters, which are really nice because these are like nice wooden counters. A lot of the bingo, well, one of the other bingo games we have, I can't say a lot. I can't generalize it that much because I don't know. We don't have tons of bingo games. This comes with like paper ones that could be easily broken, but this one actually came with really nice ones. So, and then you'll have the cards and I have a really tight rubber band around them. And so it's a pretty good stack of cards here. And then, Obviously there's probably 50 of them. <laughs> that would make sense, right? That there's 50 cards. Anyways, and so you have the card like North Dakota right here. So then it gives you the capital, it gives you the nickname, the population, the total area of it in square miles. And you know, you'll have the states that are around it on the card. So the great thing about this game is your kids get older, you can make it a lot more complicated. <laughs> So that's really, that's one of the things I really love about it. We haven't been able to do that yet. My kids aren't old enough for that. Most of the time it's just saying the state and then finding it or showing them the picture right here and they find it. But as they get older, you can say the capital of this state is Bismarck, you know, or the nickname for the state is this, or this state is on the South has South Dakota, you know, or something like you can say some of the states around it or whatever, and you can just make it a lot more complicated and help them learn more about the United States that way, or you can make it very simple. So I love that this game is very, very easy to adapt to a variety of age groups. And then if you wanted to have like prizes, you could do that because kids always love getting prizes for bingo. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to mention is puzzles. I have a few here that I'm gonna show you, but I also like the Melissa and Doug puzzle. Hopefully I'll have some footage to insert of us playing it. I don't have it like in a box, but there's a Melissa and Doug one that I'll link down in my blog post below that's also really good, like a big floor puzzle of the United States that my kids enjoy doing. But these are two other ones that my kids really like. I honestly don't know if this one's still available or not. I feel like I've looked for it before recently and I couldn't find it, but I'll link other ones below. Hopefully they're, hopefully they're good too. This one, the only thing I don't like about it is the insert. If I pull it out, do you think I'm gonna drop the puzzle everywhere? It's, it's likely, I'm just kidding. So it comes in this little insert right here. So the only thing that's hard is they have to do the puzzle like in this insert. Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard to kind of keep it together. I guess you could do it. It's just, it's gonna be more difficult for them. Let me see if I can push it back. <laughs> and there is Alaska and Hawaii down here. You just can't see them. They're, they're hiding behind there. But it's just a fun puzzle for them to put together. And it does have the form, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it has kind of a guideline, but a bad thing because if you ruin the form, then it's gonna be really hard to use the puzzle otherwise. But then this is also a book. 
So it has all the states in here, if you can see that, and some facts about them. So it's just a fun like learning book for them. And my kids just grab this one a lot and we'll just sit down and do the puzzle. Even my youngest, she doesn't do such a good job. <laughs> when I pulled it out last night to look over it, it, the puzzle was all like falling apart and I had to put it back together. So it looked all like this for you guys instead of all the, the United States had fallen apart. Not too far from the truth, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, and then the next one, the last thing I guess we wanted to mention is this one. This is a state by state tour of the USA, the 50 states. I can't remember. This might have been Remeked. I was going to say recommended. I don't even know what just happened there. But this, I think, was recommended by Confessions of a Homeschooler in her USA curriculum. Like, I think it's Road Trip to USA or something. But when you open the front cover, I'm not going to tilt this too far. I'm afraid the puzzle is going to fall out. There is a puzzle here. Again, this is one that you have to like have the form in the book to do the puzzle very easily. So I have a love hate relationship with these because it's hard to do them without the book. So there's the puzzle there, which is fun for the kids to do. And then in the back of this one, it also has a place like if you are collecting the quarters. Whoa, sorry, I can't hold it. <laughs> Too many things. So it looks like this. So you could have your kids collecting quarters or maybe you're already doing that and that would be a fun place to put it. Just another fun activity to learn about the United States. And then just so much information in here as well for you to study about each state. So it's a great game type resource for the kids. My kids love pulling out these puzzles, but it also is a great learning resource to use in your homeschool space to teach your kids about the United States. So those are my USA geography game schooling games. Man, that's a mouthful. <laughs> so these are some of the things we enjoy. These are really the only games we have for geography. So again, if you have recommendations for more that you love, put them down below. My kids are, you know, from like nine to four. So any within that age range would be wonderful for me to have more recommendations for that. And if you enjoy seeing game schooling videos, please give me a thumbs up so I'll know to make more and I will see you next time.